Are we filming? Yes, we are. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to another video. Uh, today, I'm reviewing a Filofax Ranger, uh, which uh, was very interesting because the uh, in the catalogues, this was... I've seen photographs of this uh, being advertised by a guy. You know, uh, which which I think is quite rare, um, and it is unusual because this model has a kind of a, like a purse arrangement or a wallet, if you like. Um, but it was actually uh, at least in in one catalogue, maybe more, but certainly one. Um, I had to do a double take because there is so much um, emphasis on uh, marketing to females. Um, that it was quite unusual to see uh, to see a, a Folifax, uh being marketed, being touted by a guy. So interesting, interesting. Um, but uh, I've had this for quite some time, actually. Uh, but I have um, I've decided to slim down my collection and make way for more. Uh, and the original plan for this one was I was going to buy it, review it and sell it. But I've had I've I've had this for so long. I've not actually used it, it's just just been in my collection. Um but I do actually like it. Although it's full f uh, faux leather, F A U X. It's got a really nice smell to it. Um so it it's it's a it's a useful thing with this massive pocket. Um uh, especially because they're gusted like this. And then you've got a zip here, uh, which is quite a smooth zip. Um, very, very handy. Very, very handy. Um, it's got uh, a credit card arrangement here, and then there's like a maybe an ID thing here, maybe here. I don't know. I don't know what you would use it for, but you've got a, a full-length pocket here, a little bit tight because it's not gusted. And then you've got another full-length pocket here. Again, very, very tight because it's not gusted. And then on the back, you've got this extra full-length pocket here. So, um, more pockets than you can shake a stick at. Um, let me have a look at the uh, the pen loop. Okay, so this I don't have a uh, a standard Firefox pen, but uh, I do know um, from experience that this Pilot V7 is the same width as a Firefox pen. It's a bit on the tight side, but I would say it's indicative of the fact that uh, it's a standard Firefox pen loop and. Crucially, this is what I call an outboard pen loop, i.e. it points to the outer edge of the Filofax, so it won't interfere with dividers uh, when you use it. Uh, one thing I have noticed with these is, uh, this is this is riveted on, and it's hidden behind this uh, this this piece here. Doesn't go all the way through, but it's riveted on. Um, but they are very very loud. You wouldn't want to use this in a library, that's for sure. Um, let's see if we can shut it gently. It's difficult. So I mean, it's shall we say it's robust, um, but very very nice. It is what it is. Um, Plenty of oh, twenty-three millimeter rings, by the way. Uh, so pretty, pretty standard. And uh, chunky, chunky. It's got the Filofax logo there. Um, looks good. Looks good in my opinion. I think this is quite novel. Um, it reminds me of my Filofax Lindhurst, which has also got a uh, a full length slip pocket like this. Um, but as it stands. I think I'm going to sell this one. Um, as you know, I occasionally uh, use eBay and, and, and post traditional English auctions starting at a penny. 
uh, and I let the market decide, as it were. And then uh, mainly I use a fixed price, uh, which I then reduce every weekend, typically by about 5%. And I start at, a, uh, at, at the high end uh, and then work my way down potentially all the way to a pound. Um, so someone's going to get a bargain there. But um, I think I'm going to do that with this one. I'm going to start it at a... Um, relatively high price. I have noticed that these are, um, I don't know why, um, but obviously as the owner of one, I'm quite pleased from a, from a, a, a purely mercenary point of view as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, someone that has dealt in antiques and vintage items since they were a teenager. Uh, from a mercenary point of view, uh, I, um, you know, I, I want to make a profit if I can, um, but uh, I accept occasionally that I will make a loss, so there is an opportunity there, um, but uh, follow it, um, follow it on its downward, downward trail in terms of price, I'm probably going to start it at, uh, well, I'm going to start it at a high price, I haven't decided yet, I'm going to start it at a high price and then I drop it by five percent each uh, each weekend, and uh, and then if no one sees it or spots it, then there's going to be a bargain to be had. But but uh, one thing I never do is leave a, a fixed price item hanging in the wind there forever and ever and ever, because I don't think that's very very healthy for the market. I think it's important that the buyer has the opportunity to decide the market. The, the market value of uh, an item, so so that's a uh, kind of pseudo Dutch auction that I that I do. Well, I start at high price, drop it by five percent every weekend. Uh, it will find a buyer at some point, and then uh, I will, um, uh, uh, and then I will put it in a box and uh, ship it to the to the buyer. So, um, thanks very much for watching. Until my next video, goodbye.